In our first videos on the Jacobian matrix, we learned the relationship that I've shown here, that the Jacobian matrix uh, transforms the joint velocities, theta dot one, theta dot two, etc., into the linear and rotational velocities of the end effector. This is known as forward velocity. It's, uh, the, the terminology is equivalent to the forward kinematics for position that we learned previously, in which we're trying to transform the joint angles into positions and the rotation of the end effector. Let's suppose that we want to do not forward velocity kinematics, but inverse velocity kinematics. In other words, we want to specify what the joint velocity or what the end effector velocities will be, and we want to calculate what joint velocities will give us those end effector velocities. If you've taken a linear algebra class, the solution that might occur to you initially is that we should simply take the inverse of the Jacobian matrix. If I left multiply both sides of this equation by the inverse of the Jacobian matrix, I'll get what I'm showing here. And this expression, the inverse of the Jacobian times the Jacobian, becomes the identity matrix and goes away. So I get this equation here. And this equation would give me the joint velocities as an output when the linear and rotational velocities of the end effector are given as an input. Now the remaining question is, can I actually do this? In other words, is the Jacobian matrix invertible? If the Jacobian matrix is an invertible matrix, then this equation will, uh, will be able to do this. Now, to answer the question, is the Jacobian matrix invertible, you have to first remember what the dimensions are of the Jacobian matrix. Remember that we have always six rows of the Jacobian matrix. Those six rows correspond to three rows for linear velocity and three rows for rotational velocity. It also has a number of columns that is equal to the number of joints. Now, in general, one of the requirements for a matrix to be invertible is that that matrix has to be square. In order for our Jacobian matrix to be square, it would have to have six columns to correspond with the six rows that it always has. And so we can invert the Jacobian matrix as long as our manipulator has six joints. That's not a bad situation to be in because many times our manipulators do in fact have six joints. As we learned in Robotics 1, Six joints are the number that is necessary in order to uh, guarantee that the end effector can be positioned at any point in three-dimensional space and at any orientation. So in general, the manipulators that, that you'll be working with will have six joints and their Jacobians will be invertible. But what about the case where you don't have six joints? The manipulators we've been using in our examples in this section of the class all have three joints. We've been only looking at the arm part of the manipulator. In that case, can you do inverse velocity? 
we've learned previously that if you have a manipulator with only three joints, that is, three degrees of freedom, you can at most control three of that manipulator's positions. In other words, you can control the X, Y, Z position of the end effector, but you can't control the orientations of the end effector at the same time. It turns out that the same thing holds true for velocities as for positions. That is, we can only control three of the velocities. We can control the x velocity, y velocity, and z velocity, but we can't simultaneously control all three of these linear velocities and the rotational velocities as well. The way that this plays out in our Jacobian matrix that is not square is like this. We can separate this matrix into two parts. We can take this top part, the linear velocities, by themselves, and this will give us a square matrix. This JV is a 3 by 3. In this case, we're simply ignoring the rotational part of the Jacobian. And that is mathematically why we can control only the linear, the linear part of the velocity, but not the linear and rotational parts of the velocity at the same time. If we tried to control the linear and the rotational parts of the velocity at the same time, we would have a Jacobian matrix that is not square. If we ignore the rotational part and only look at the linear part, we get a square matrix and it can be inverted. So we could rewrite this Jacobian matrix equation for a three degree of freedom manipulator kind of like this. Here I've taken the inverse of just the linear velocity part of the Jacobian and left multiplied it by the three linear velocities of the end effector, and that gives us the three velocities of the joints. This is the equation that we'll be using in our lab in class.